now that we got car racing out of the way, we need a Mortal Kombat addict to enroll into the UFC. A bunch of Sims architects tasked with building a city and creating families. And last but not least, when do I get to choose my star Pokemon and go on my adventure with Best Boy Torchic? While we wait for all those important issues to actually be addressed, sit down, relax, my name is Ren, and this is my review of Gran Turismo, based on a true story. Welcome back, movie fans. I don't know about you, but while I was never into car racing games, I have always been aware of the name and the magnitude of the title Gran Turismo throughout all my entire life. And of all the video game adaptation movies or TV shows that we've ever gotten, there has never been one made under such specific circumstances. While I still stand by the fact that Gran Turismo is very much a video game adaptation, it is also the ultimate wish fulfillment tale of a teenage Gran Turismo player whose gaming skills actually won him a series of Nissan competitions to become an actual professional race car driver. And there's something very compelling about seeing that unfold on screen. Being entirely honest, I didn't go into Gran Turismo excited. Like I said, I did not grow up with these games. I've never been into racing or cars, be it in life or in video games, but I have loved racing movies in the past, such as Ford v Ferrari and Rush. So I went into Gran Turismo willing and hopeful that I would like it at least. And I like a lot of things in this film, particularly its strong focus on the underdog story, the circumstances of this kid and his background and his family dynamic and what brings him into this world, what connects him to the game of Gran Turismo and eventually makes him so successful in entering this Nissan competition, getting these contracts and becoming a professional race car driver. And because of that, this story has an emotionally relatable hook that connects us with our main character who is elevated by veteran performances surrounding him, such as Orlando Bloom and David Harbour, who is easily the heart of this film. Every sequence with Harbour is the best part of this film. He plays the typical tropey mentor in the underdog story who has a ghost from his past that haunts him, and that's how he connects with his mentee. But seeing how the two connect and the relationship between them flourishes is something really interesting. I was constantly captivated by the relationships of the characters and the family dynamic surrounding Jan. And one of my favorite aspects of this film is that the real-life Jan turned out to be his own stunt double for this film. So Gran Turismo, in many ways, ended up not just surprising me, but surprising me in the things it did well, particularly with its lead character and how it brings us into his perspective and his struggles internally, where when he's racing, he'll observe things and calculate his moves according to how he did it in the games. And so you see these certain lines of the curves he's got to make, how much throttle should he put into his pedal. That said, there are a lot of things that don't work in this film, which is Intriguing because this film is directly by Neil Blomkamp and it's very easy to forget that because Sony is massively downplaying it. And I think he brings a lot of that visual flair to this film, but I wasn't so much a fan of the actual racing in Gran Turismo. Not that the racing sequences are badly shot or badly lit or don't have great sound design to them, but they're all shot in the exact same way. And so they all easily blend together. They all start with a drone shot and then there are just very standard visuals throughout the race. The actual beats of the story are compelling to watch, but the way it's all presented, it feels just very standard and nothing really stands out apart from one moment that has nothing to do with visuals. I will not get into it because it's a spoiler for the story, 
but the racing sequences, which should have been this film's highlight, are actually <laughs> the least interesting parts about it. Another thing is that despite this film showcasing a level of sincerity when it comes to the characterization and character dynamics throughout this film, really likes to rub itself in the back. Every time you get caught up in a moment of emotional sincerity, they find a way to display their cynicism. There's a constant grating, distracting level of self-aggrandizing from Sony with their product placement. It's so not subtle, it takes you immediately out of the experience, even in this film's most effective moments. And they are so distracting because Sony is really driving home the fact that this film is based on a true story. In many territories, the title of this film has even been changed to Gran Turismo based on a true story. And I'm not joking. But at the same time, they cannot forget you this is a product. This is a video game. And so every chance they get throughout this film, they remind you of the manufacturing behind all this. And these are just two notions, two ideas that contrast one another. They completely combat. Is this film about the actual fantastic true story that actually happened all because of this little video game? Or is this actually to promote the video game and the next entry in the franchise that you're creating? And it's Sony's interference. It's Sony's self-aggrandizing ego that becomes so mind-numbing to watch. And it is genuinely infuriating. It doesn't work with the tone of this film. It doesn't work with the kind of story it's trying to tell. And they're all unnecessary reminders. You are watching a Gran Turismo movie. You don't need all of this soniness thrown into your face. And it results in some of the most unintentionally hilarious moments in the film. I couldn't believe these choices were given the green light and passed the final cut of the film. It feels like absolute self-sabotage. So I will concede, a lot of the elements in Gran Turismo are enjoyable and narratively effective, but Sony undercuts its emotional potential from beginning to end at its most key moments. So as I dive into my final thoughts on Gran Turismo, it's time for you to start the conversation in the comments below with your thoughts on the film, your thoughts on the gaming history, on this story if you knew it before. And remember, Gran Turismo is based on a true story. So if you want to talk more movies and TV, this is the place to be. Consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. Gran Turismo is at its most engaging as an underdog story on defying expectations, less so in the repetitive racing sequences that all blend together. David Harbour's heartfelt performance delivers glimpses of sincerity, but they're outshined by Sony's grating and cynical self-congratulatory moments. I'm giving Gran Turismo a C+. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to share your thoughts on Gran Turismo in the comments below. And if you were to become anything because you're very good at a video game, what would it be? Anything and everything down there. And a big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel. I'll be back very soon with more videos. And so until the next one, love each other and love the movies.